We are going to trim, split, and nudge clips. Yes, you've probably always wanted to nudge a clip, and now here's your big chance. To follow along, go get the 1209 trimming multi-track session over inside the Working Files multi-track session subfolder, and there it is. Okay, we've got the Gettysburg address up there. You've seen that before. We're going to do a little bit of trimming up here in the Gettysburg address. To do that, we use the trim tool. Now, there are four tools up here, not one of which is the trim tool. That's the move, razor, slip, and time selection tool. So where is the trim tool? Well, the trim tool is a context-sensitive tool. No matter what tool you've selected here, you can access the trim tool simply by where you place the cursor. As I get to the edit point, boom, it turns into a trim tool, that little half rectangle pointing to the right or to the left. If it's pointing to the right, that means I'm gonna trim the second clip from the left and pull it in to the right. If it's pointing to the left, that means I'm gonna trim the first clip and drag it in from the right, shorten it from the right-hand side. That's the trim tool. It's context sensitive. It depends on where you are over the clip. Notice I have the move tool selected now, that guy right there. And wherever I hover it, it's the move tool. It'll move this clip if I want it to. But if I get down here to the volume envelope, it turns into a volume envelope controlling tool. And down here over the pan envelope, same thing. So, you know, it's a context sensitive tool. So the first order of business here is to trim this first clip so that there's less of a gap at the end of it. And to trim, you kind of want to get in closer so you can get a better picture of the area you want to trim. So I'm going to zoom in on the timeline here. I'm going to right click on the time ruler and drag. So I zoom into just that section there so I get a better look at it. There's the edit point. And I want to get rid of some of this dead air here. So let me listen to it for a second. And then are created equal. Okay. Well, I want to get rid of that little segment right there. To do that, I just trim away this excess stuff here. To do that, I just hover my cursor over the edit point until it turns into a left-facing trim tool, and then click and drag. And it's going to snap to the current time indicator because we've got snapping on. As I get there, it snaps right to the current time indicator. If I turn snapping off and try that again, I'll go Control or Command Z and do that again. When we get to the current time indicator, it's going to kind of just slide around there. It won't snap to the current time indicator. It's pretty close. I'm not going to approximate it, but it's a much more accurate if you want to really nail it to turn on snapping. So I'll turn on snapping again and get that guy right there. Okay, now that we've done this wonderful trimming work, we have this gap. And do we want a gap between clips? Probably not. You might, but you probably won't want them. So how do you get rid of the gap? Well, let's just zoom out a little bit and I'll just take a look at the manual way of doing it. What you could do is make sure you have the move tool selected and grab the header here or any part of this clip and just drag it to the left to fill it in. Yes. But then there's a gap over here. <laughs> oh no, I can trim this over too and, or slide it over and get that one moved over. But if I check to the right, there'll be a gap between it too. So that's not a very effective way to do things. There's a keyboard shortcut that we can use to do this or a menu command. I'm gonna go Control or Command Z a couple of times to return to this gap. I need to right click inside this gap to get to that menu command. And sometimes it's hard to really right click in that area because it's so small. So I'll zoom back in again. And I'm going to right click here and it opens up this context menu. And notice right here it says ripple delete. Ripple delete causes the clips after this point to slide over to fill the gap. Well, we can delete clips, but no clips are selected and we don't want to delete clips here. But we do want to delete the gap. So I click on that, boom, it's gone. So we've deleted the gap. All right, let's try to trim this one on the right and use the same methodology. I adjust my cursor so it's facing to the right as opposed to the left. And now I start trimming to the right. And I'm gonna go right up against the clip there because I know that the timing will be such that the pause will be just right here based on this previous clip. And now I wanna close that gap again. Now, if I go to the menu, edits, there's a ripple delete here too, except there is no gap option down here. It just talks about clips here. And since there's a selected clip here, it would delete that clip and that would not be what we wanna do. There's a keyboard shortcut for that, shift backspace, but in this case, we want to have the gap be deleted, not the clip. So no command here will work here in the edit menu. So let's go back over here and right click there. And there's ripple delete. And lo and behold, there's a gap option here. So we close the gap there. So now let's see what that sounds like. Created equal. Now we are engaged. So we took care of that pause and now it's a more natural pace between the first and the second clip. All right, now I want to show you a different way to trim a clip. It's called Trim to the Time Selection. I'm going to go to the last clip here in this track because it has a couple of long pauses built into it. Way over there, there it is. I'm going to zoom out a way so you can get a better look at it by pressing the minus key or the hyphen key a bunch of times. And there it is. 
you can see it's got a big pause at the beginning and a big pause at the end there. So I want to try to zoom in on just a little bit and then we're going to trim away the excess baggage. And we can do that using the time selection tool. So I switch over to the time selection tool, this eye beam. And I want to select the area I want to retain. This is very much like cropping a photograph. When you crop a photograph, you select the area you want to keep and everything outside that selection will be deleted. So here we're going to do the same thing. I'm going to select this area that I want to keep from there to there, and I want to get rid of the stuff at both ends. How do I do that? Well, it's always a right-click menu, right? There's always that context menu that's available here, but I'm going to show you the regular menu command first. You would think that something like this where you're cutting something would be inside the edit menu because in the edit menu you got cut and paste and things like that. But when you want to do a trim to the time selection, that's inside the clip menu down to here, trim to time selection. And notice the keyboard shortcut, Alt-T in Windows, Option-T in Mac. Let's go over here to the context menu, right click there, and lo and behold, there is the trim to time selection. So I'm going to click on that, and we just got rid of the two things at the end and kept the stuff in the middle. I'll click away to deselect that area. And now, of course, how do we fill that gap? Well, we could just slide it over. I've got the time selection tool here, but when I hover up to the handle on the top, it turns into move tool, and I can slide it over, and it'll snap. But the farther I go, it becomes this little crossfade, but there's the snap right there. But I'd rather use the ripple delete, so I'm going to right-click and go ripple delete gap, and that'll slide it over. All right, let's do one more thing. We'll split a clip. You can split a clip when you want to, let's say, remove part of the inside of a clip, or you can split a clip when you want to expand an area to give yourself a longer pause, for example. So let's slide over a little bit. We'll first split a clip so that we can take part of it out. So here's a pause here. Hello, this ground. The brave man. Kind of a long pauser, not that long. But I want to trim away a little bit. So I'm going to put my current time indicator right there in the middle. I'll zoom in a little bit to get a better look at it. I want to trim away part of the inside, but really, how can I trim away part of the inside but I can only trim the end? Well, I need to make two new ends. And the way you do that is by going get the razor tool. And I click here. And I'll notice if I hover down here, I don't want to grab the volume envelope or the pan envelope. So I do want to go someplace where the razor tool will be active. And it does kind of snap to the current time indicator. You need to get right there where it's kind of hitting the current time indicator. And now I can cut there. If I cut over here, it's not going to jump to the current time indicator. It's going to go right there, and I don't want it to go there. I'll go Control or Command Z, don't do that. I want it to go right there where the current time indicator is, right about there. There we go. And now it's close enough to that guy. And now I can trim. So I go back, and I can either go back and change the Move tool or just hover over the ends here, and we'll turn into the Trim tool. So I'll trim this way a little ways. I'll trim this way a little ways. And now guess what? We're going to right-click. Even with the Razor tool selected, we can still right-click here and go Ripple Delete. Gap, and that takes care of that. We've now shortened that distance Optical. to make it a little bit tighter there. Oh, this ground, the brave men living in something like that. It may not be exactly the pacing you wanted, but I just want to use that for an example. Let's go on to this next one now. We need to expand this one, I think, a little bit. You say here, but it can maybe just have to be a little bit longer. <laughs> I'm going to use the razor tool for that as well. So hover and click there. Now I don't want to trim, I want to slide this to the right. But let me just zoom out a little bit and show you what happens if I do that. I want to take this clip and move it to the right so I create a little bit of a gap. I want to move it to the right by dragging right along the header here and drag it. But now look what happens. On the right-hand side, it's overlapping the next clip. It's not pushing the next clip to the right. It's overlapping the next clip. Well, that's not a good thing. I want it to push the next clip over. So what you can do is you can select all the clips to the right and then push it over. So I'm going to zoom out a little bit farther by pressing the minus key a couple more times. I want to select both clips here. Let me go back and get my Move tool. If I click on one clip and then control or command click on the next one, then I can select multiple clips. It's just like selecting multiple files over here. I click on this one and then control or command click on that one, control or command click on that one. I can select these individual files as a group. Same thing is true for clips. I can select those two. I can select one more over here, one more there. As long as I'm holding down the control or the command key, I can select multiple clips or I can deselect them as well. So I've got these two guys selected now. So now if I drag it to the right, they both go in concert. See how that works? But this dragging methodology is not very exacting. It's kind of clunk, clunk, clunk. We go along because we're snapping to the time demarcations there. Might be better if we could do it a little more gradually. So I'm going to slide it back. And I'm going to zoom in a bit. And we're going to try to use the, I know you've been waiting to do this, the nudge tool or the nudge feature. This clip is now selected, as is the one next to it. And I want to nudge it over to the right. And the way you nudge something, is to hold down the Alt key in Windows or the Option key in Mac, and then press the period key if you want it to go to the right. The period key below the L 
on the keyboard. We're moving it over to the right, and it goes over in little increments like that. If I want it to go back to the left, I press the comma key to move it back to the left. The increment length is based on how far you're zoomed into or out of the timeline. It's not based on a set time unit. If I zoom way in on it, you'll see that the distance it moves relative to what we saw before is the same. It's just this little distance. It's not based on time. It's just based on how you're zoomed in on it. So the tighter you're zoomed in, the shorter the actual time it's moving as you nudge it. Then once you nudge it a bit, you can sort of try it out, decide whether this works for you or not. So I'll zoom out a bit and see if this timing works for me. here. But So that timing actually works out pretty well. So we nudged it over by nudging two clips at once. I'll zoom out this to show you that we have both clips selected and they both nudged over. I'll just do some more nudging here. You'll see that hold on the Alt key and you'll see that off to the right they go. If you want them to nudge a little bit faster, hold down the Shift key as you hold down the Alt key. So it's like a three finger thing here. You got the Shift key down, the Alt key down, and then start pressing the period of the comma. You see that the movement is in larger segments, larger units. So how about that? We trimmed clips, split them, and we nudged clips here in a multi-track session.